How to care for a tarantula. Tarantulas are hairy spiders that live for the night. With more than 800 species, you'll have a wide range of options when choosing a pet tarantula, from burrowing to tree-dwelling tarantulas. Once you get your tarantula home, you'll want to create a comfortable habitat with a stable temperature, high humidity and nice hiding places. You'll need to follow a feeding schedule, but tarantulas don't need the daily feeding that more conventional pets require. Creating a habitat. Get a 10-gallon 37 liters locking terrarium. Tarantulas are escape artists, so make sure the top of the terrarium locks tight. I would put a brick or two on the lid just in case. Although 10 gallons 37 liters is the ideal size for keeping a single tarantula, you can get away with a 5 gallon 18 liter tank. Never keep two tarantulas in the same cage, because they are territorial cannibals. One of them will eat the other. Never keep two tarantulas in the same cage, because they are territorial cannibals. One of them will eat the other. Adapt a small fish tank. Since fish tanks have feeding holes, you'll have to seal the holes in the top to prevent the tarantula from escaping. You can use aquarium silicone sealer to seal the feeding holes. Make sure you leave two small holes in the top for ventilation, which should be a maximum of 5 30 seconds, 4 millimeters. If you are worried about the tarantula escaping through the top of the tank, you can place a rock on the lid. If you are housing tree-dwelling tarantulas, you'll want to place the tank vertically. You would start it horizontally and if they like living up high make it vertical. Any extra vertical room poses a threat to burrowing species because they are more susceptible to injuries from falling, unlike arboreal species. If you are worried about the tarantula escaping through the top of the tank, you can place a rock on the lid. If you are housing tree-dwelling tarantulas, you'll want to place the tank vertically. You would start it horizontally and if they like living up high make it vertical. Any extra vertical room poses a threat to burrowing species because they are more susceptible to injuries from falling, unlike arboreal species. Spread a thin layer of substrate on the bottom of your tank. You'll need 1 to 3 inches 2.54 to 7.62 centimeters of sterilized bedding on the bottom of the terrarium. Although there are many suitable substrates, you could put down a 2 centimeter layer of vermiculite, and then add a thin layer of cocoa fiber. There are many substrates to choose from, such as coconut fiber, reptile bark, sphagnum moss, peat moss, sterilized potting soil, and vermiculite. If you choose peat moss, you need to sterilize it. Put it in the microwave for 10 minutes in order to kill parasitic mites. If you don't have a microwave use the oven on a mid-heat. Since some species will dig into the substrate, you might need up to 5 inches 12.7 centimeters of substrate. There are many substrates to choose from, such as coconut fiber, reptile bark, sphagnum moss, peat moss, sterilized potting soil, and vermiculite. If you choose peat moss, you need to sterilize it. Put it in the microwave for 10 minutes in order to kill parasitic mites. If you don't have a microwave use the oven on a mid-heat. Since some species will dig into the substrate, you might need up to 5 inches 12.7 centimeters of substrate. Make a broken pot shelter for a daytime hiding spot. Since tarantulas are nocturnal, you'll need to make a shelter for them to hide from the daylight and get some sleep. You can make a shelter by cutting a ceramic or plastic pot in half. Bury the broken pot in the sand to create a little hiding place. The entranceway should be just large enough for your tarantula to get inside and the interior should be nice and dark. A great hiding place is a hollowed log. Pick a hollowed log that is already dried out, since a wet log could lead to mold issues in the terrarium. You should avoid inserting any sharp objects into the terrarium, since your tarantula could injure itself. A great hiding place is a hollowed log. Pick a hollowed log that is already dried out, since a wet log could lead to mold issues in the terrarium. You should avoid inserting any sharp objects into the terrarium, since your tarantula could injure itself. Add bamboo and silk plants for tree-dwelling tarantulas. In contrast to burrowing tarantulas, which like to hide out in the substrate, tree-dwelling tarantulas live in grasses and trees. You can recreate this habitat by adding bamboo, branches, and silk plants to the tank. The tarantulas will make their webs in the branches. Tree-dwelling tarantulas have slightly longer legs, which include more surface area for climbing. Ground-dwelling species should be discouraged from climbing, since they could easily fall and injure themselves. Remember, the more you put in, the more you will have to clean. A piece of store-bought driftwood might be appreciated. Tree-dwelling tarantulas have slightly longer legs, which include more surface area for climbing. Ground-dwelling species should be discouraged from climbing, since they could easily fall and injure themselves. Remember, the more you put in, the more you will have to clean. A piece of store-bought driftwood might be appreciated. Monitor the temperature range. You can put a thermostat on the side of the tank to check the temperature. Since tarantulas normally live in a tropical or subtropical environment, you'll need to maintain a tank temperature of between 22 and 30 Celsius 71 and 86 Fahrenheit. 
Avoid placing your tank near a sunny window, since the tank could easily overheat. If the tank is located in a centrally heated room that is within the ideal temperature range, you won't need to heat it. Avoid placing your tank near a sunny window, since the tank could easily overheat. If the tank is located in a centrally heated room that is within the ideal temperature range, you won't need to heat it. Heat one half of the tank. If the tank falls below the ideal temperature range, you can use a hot rock or an electric heat mat to heat it. In either case, you should only heat one half of the tank, so that your spider can self-regulate its temperature by moving to the warm or cool side of the tank. You should avoid letting the tank temperature exceed 30 Celsius 86 Fahrenheit. If you turn the heat off in the spring or autumn, you will need to use the heat mat during those months. If you maintain a cooler temperature during the winter months, you should use a heat mat. Use a plant mister to maintain a 50% humidity level in the tank. Use a plant mister to spray the tank and keep the humidity levels up. You can put a humidity gauge on the side of the tank. Check it regularly to make sure the humidity doesn't drop too far, which can be dangerous for tarantulas when they molt. Check the contents of the tank to make sure there is no mold. Check the contents of the tank to make sure there is no mold.